everyone. So today, the Thermo Senko Mout Whiskey and Fianne Dundee have partnered to create a second numerary series edition with Melody Lang, director at Zaha Hadid Architects, creating two whisky. One is a 49-year-old Thermo hosted in a sculpture and a 16-year-old collectible. And on stage today, we have Greg Glass, master whisky maker of Thermo, a master distiller Richard Peterson, OBE. So I believe that it has been a very long and at times very challenging journey that you have been through in the past two and more years. One aspect that I found very interesting about this creative partnership is the clear contrast in your creative background. On one side, we have Greg and Richard, who are the master of creating something intangible and without a physical form. And on the other side, we have you, Melody, specialized in creating architecture and spaces. So Melody, could you share with us how all these conversations start and what kind of brief you received from Del Moore at the beginning? So while this project was two years in the making, which I'm going to come to, it also has me reflecting a lot on the almost two decades that I've worked in the office. And so I have to bring up you know, the first day that I was in the office and um, coming over from New York. And there was a project in Miami for the inaugural Design Miami. And there was this installation that Zaha was commissioned to design. And the team had something already started. And when they briefed me, they explained, this is what Zaha wants. She wants it to be more elastic, more connective, this continuity across the space. And I was able to use the digital tools that I learned as a young architect to really make that happen, to take the sketch that they had to its kind of fullest form. And then after that, it was quite a quick project. And then after that, there was also the retrospective at the Guggenheim Museum, which is the famous uh, Rotunda by Frank Lloyd Wright. And working on that project, so I wanted to create a connectivity across the rotunda. So even though there's this continuous ramp, it was also creating this kind of visual and conceptual connectivity across that cross through the floors. And then there have been a number and a series of other projects since then, obviously, that I collaborated with her. But I think that little story is a analogy for how we continue to work in the office and we build on a repertoire of work where we're able to fold in uh, young talent, new skills, and build on a body of work that's been started many, many decades ago. And then fast forward to two years ago, Greg came to visit us in the office. And I just thought, well, we're starting this project. They've kind of briefed me a bit about the Dalmore. So we went to visit the distillery. And for me, it's always trying to understand first just to be really observant and to understand what is the process of the making, of the expertise of the craft behind the whiskey. And then through that discovery process, I was really inspired just by starting to imagine the almost unseen movements that create the final product of the whiskey. The way that the uh, stills have this movement of the particles, which is kind of continuous and three-dimensional, and the way that those layers through all of the different casks and the movements of the hands handling the casks. And in many ways, the project through all of these threads, we kind of move forward and then we go back to some original ideas that we discussed, and then they all layer on top of each other as we um, create a more refined outcome through the development process. And I remember at the very beginning, when we first talked about when you first introduced this project to me, I was trying very hard to understand what starts first, how the pull process starts. Do you come up with the form first or do, do you come up with all the favorites first? I think you put it very beautifully because it's not only about this project. If we want to look at the origin of all the concept, it's actually you can even trace that to back to your earliest memories. Yeah, and you can't escape the fact that you bring your entire self, like all of your experiences, all of the training, um, the ambition and the drive. So we put a lot of ourselves into the project. And um, simultaneously, it was also just super fascinating that any single step in the process, we were coming full circle and revisiting things that we learned about each other's craft, but to a whole new level of resolution. Even in the first meeting, 
when we showed these little sketches to Greg, he was explaining how spatial and three-dimensional the experience of tasting the whiskey is. And that really struck me as well, because obviously we come from very different worlds, but he immediately, we connected on that other level, which I would almost say is beyond the kind of words that we're using, but in the understanding of our craft. It was a very long journey. It didn't just happen overnight. Like anything that we create, it takes years to perfect. And like anything, if you're looking for luxury, you've got to wait for it. The so sculpture fully reflects what we both feel. So, so from, a, uh, from the perspective of blending practice, it's very unusual to blend your components, let it rest, and then fine-tune it by the tea, literally by the teaspoonful. So that's why uh, it must be, I think, prototyping-wise, cl- close to 300 prototypes that we've done for this project. It's fascinating to hear that there were 300 prototypes because I think we have probably 300 plus more 3D models on the server while working on this project between design ideas and refinements. Yeah, I think that's also an interesting thing to to touch on because in the sculpture, you chose glass as a medium to create a sculpture. And glass is something that you can't really control. And you, you at times you don't even know what the result could be. So why did you choose glass? Okay, so we went through a number of different design ideas, but this one, that the direction that we started to move on is really dependent on the differential in the form. So you have something that's really deep and sweeping and, and what allows you to show that through the gradient and the coloring and the depth of the material is a material that has both a transparency, but also a depth of character. So then... We started to look into glass. Glass is limited in terms of what you can cast and the curvature and the size. And it's very risky for the sculpture because it has really, really thick parts and really thin parts. So it was in the kiln for four months. And every day you turn the temperature down one degree. And at the end of that, you don't know until you take it out and you open up the piece if there's any cracks, if the piece is usable. Um, where the characteristics of the glass will come through. So there's a balance between finding the prototypes in the way that they're also working on the prototypes in the whiskey, but also giving space for the material to come into its own. Yeah, I can go on about it for a <laughs> bit longer, but maybe I'll save that for later. But it's, it's, it's so important when you see the sculpture, when you physically see it. I mean, when Greg and I are looking at whiskey, as many of you know, we swirl the whiskey around in the glass And that's why when we swirl it around and we see the sculpture, that is exactly what Melody has captured and getting the vibrancy of the colours, but the smoothness, the elegance. It's the same with the condensation in the stills, the pot stills, same with that swirling in a cask. And that's why it's so meaningful. And I think the the sculpture, although it looks so, it's so natural, it looks so organic, but uh, Melody, you explained to me also like each turn, and curve has its purpose and meaning. Can you go a bit deep into that? Yeah, I think without the hard creases, you don't understand also that there's a difference to the soft and the round um, nature of the other side of the piece. So this changing velocity, and as you trace those curves around and find where they merge uh, and they emerge and they blend into each other and there's almost like a few main layers. So there's that hierarchy of the piece, but then it's also each time we revisit it, we embed within it more layers of detail. Richard looked at the early sketch to design and he's like, Melody, this is beautiful. It's a stunning idea and piece, but is it the fullest expression of who you are and what you can create? (laughs) So, I mean, that for me is a, you know, We're used to it. I think that's what um, the trust is and the creative process. And I took that back to my team and we talked about it and we knew it's in the process, but you have to have all of those touch points. And then so we probably spent the bulk of the time after that um, with that ambition uh, because it's a lot of time and effort and it's a lot of hands that have gone into creating this um, unique piece of glass sculpture. Technically speaking, what are the biggest challenges when you're making the piece and what kind of 
like innovative uh, measures or projects or even tools that you have created together with the craftsmen to make this happen? In terms of the actual form of the sculpture, there's um, I'm pulling on a, these decades of experience also of what I learned from working with Zaha and in the Office of Form. And already when we started, you know, there are many hands on the project. I'm setting a vision and I'm setting, um, bringing ideas. They're the ones who are working on the digital model. Um, we're looking at references really wide uh, to bring them in to the project. And then that's just the beginning. So then we move into looking at working with the glass foundry. They were willing to take it on and invent new ways of making it possible, meaning the tools don't exist. You can sand a dish and you can polish a bowl of glass, but with something where the curvature is changing like this all the time, you're working with a team of multiple people and you have to invent new tools and ways to bring this form to its kind of most ideal state. And that for me is an, an analogy also to how we are creative and how we're inventive, um, both as designers and in ways to create really um, special spaces that also surround us. So today we celebrate the launch of the sculpture, the two very rare and collectible editions. And I think this marked the end of this chapter. So may I ask each of you that what experience what to um, take away from this uh, collaboration and how will it influence or inform your future creation? It's absolutely reinforced um, my the trust that I have in the process of collaborating with people who are exceptionally um, at the top of their field and the potential of what this type of collaboration can bring out. I think One thing that really stands out for me on this project, getting to know Greg and Richard, they're so perceptive that when we spoke, it wasn't just about the physical outcome of the project. Um, so what they put into this and what we were working with was also um, imbued with all of our life experiences throughout the project. And I think it helped me to show, as an analogy for how I worked, let's say, with my team and with the fabricators, the importance of learning how to see. And they showed me a process of seeing and sensing. And I think as designers, we have to, the more that we look, the more that we learn, and the more that we can bring into um, a project. And I think all of those lived experiences that we carry with us, they're so essential to be able to um, create, to input into the next um, creation that we bring into the world. Amazing. I always think that what we take from this is uh, what whiskey's all about. You know, passion elevates the soul to achieve greater things. But you can only do that with people that you want to share. But whiskey is for sharing. That's what it's about. And we feel that uh, with Melody, if she had not had the personality of friendliness, warmth and love, we would never have achieved it. So it is one of passion. We all must have passion, but if we want to achieve something luxurious, something, you know, the icon of what whiskey is all about, then we need to work closely uh, together. And that's why I think, yes, as Greg has mentioned, when you go away and you see the sculpture, but you see some of the architecture, when you go to Beijing and see the fabulous airport over there that's been opened, you'll see the swirls going on there. It's always constantly evolving, and it comes back to, how people feel. Art is about emotion. Well, I hope when you see these two products, it is really a big emotion, not only looking, but tasting as well. So what I'm going to take away from this is a different approach to whiskey making over time. Great. So congratulations again, Melody, Greg. Uh, Richard, the more team, and also via Nay Dundi. And I hope... Um, this collaboration, this journey will continue in the future. And uh, I hope you all um, enjoy the rest of the program today. And thank you very much for everyone to be here today. Thank you.